17 order, we do have a quorum. Let's please stand and pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All individuals are asked to either silence or turn off cell phones, pages, or other electronic devices that may disrupt the meeting. Approve the agenda. Approve the agenda as posted in, in accordance with the open meeting law and here and place all agenda items on the table for discussion. What's the wish of the council? Make a motion to approve. Second. I got a motion by Mayor Zilka, second by Council Member Kanafla to approve the agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Approval of the minutes, a copy of the minutes for the special work session meeting of March 20th, 2017 and the regular meeting of March 20th, 2017 are enclosed. What's the wish of the council? I make I'll a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Got a motion by Council Member Lundberg, second by Council Member Lildergren to approve the minutes. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Approval of the bills, checks number 96050 through 96126, totaling $433,088.53. What's the wish of the council? I make a motion to approve the bills. Second. Got a motion by Mayor Zilka, second by Alderman Hercock to approve the bills. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Awards, donations, presentations, and proclamations. Got award. Uh, Grant Wabash National LP, Minnesota Investment Fund. John? Yes, so um, at our March 6th meeting, we were holding the public hearing for, uh, in, as a resolution to support the grant application to the Minnesota Investment Fund. That's a Department of Employment and Economic Development through the state. Uh, we were awarded that grant of $400,000. So it is a, we administer it on behalf of the state. The money comes to us and then it, when they meet the performance guidelines uh, through uh, that deed has set, uh, Wabash will receive the, the $400,000 grant fund over a period of two years. What's the wish of the council? Make a motion to accept. Second. Got a motion by Council Member Gushek, second by Alderman Hercock to accept the grant. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose, same sign. Motion carries proclamation, National Service Recognition Day. Mr. Mayor. Mr. President, um, we have some individuals here this evening that typically when we uh, proclaim this day, uh, we just read off the names and uh, uh, don't ask them attend and don't hand them an award. So I thought it'd be nice to recognize them for all the amount of hours that they donate um, to this community. And so I am gonna go up to the podium and I will read the proclamation. Then when I'm done with that, I have an award for each one of you. And when I call your name, I'd like to have you come up there, stand up there and wait and so we can get a picture. Whereas service to others is a hallmark of American character and central to how we meet our challenges, and whereas the nation's mayors and city councils are increasingly turning to national service and volunteerism as a cost-effective strategy to meet city needs, and whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants address the most pressing challenges facing our cities and our counties, from educating students or educating students for their jobs of the 21st century and supporting veterans and military families to providing health services and helping communities recover from natural disasters. And whereas AmeriCorps, AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants serve in more than 50,000 locations across the country, bolstering the civic, neighborhood, and faith-based organizations that are so vital to our economic and social well-being. And whereas in 2016, nine volunteers from our community 
served 6,041 hours assisting children in the Little Falls School District, working one-on-one -on -one with students needing extra help in reading, spelling, and math skills. Those volunteers are Mary Blake, John Blom, Rita Britz Tennis, Helen Funk, Edna Gallis, Sister Benita Lindstrom, Sister Carol Meckel, Judy Palaszczuk, and Annie Sharon, and whereas national service participants increase the impact of the organizations they serve with both through their direct service and by recruiting and managing millions of additional volunteers, and whereas national service represents a unique public-private partnership that invests in community solutions and leverages non-federal resources to strengthen community impact and to increase the return on taxpayer dollars, and whereas national service participants demonstrate commitment, dedication, and patriotism by making an intensive commitment that remains with them in their future endeavors, <laughs> and whereas the, the Corporation for National and Community Service shares a priority with mayors nationwide to engage citizens, improve lives, and strengthen communities, and is joining with the National League of Cities, City of Service, and mayors across the country to recognize the impact of service on the Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service on April 4th, 2017. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Gregory J. Zelka, Mayor of Little Falls, do hereby <coughs> proclaim April 4th, 2017 as National, Recogni Re National Recognition of Service Day and encourage residents to recognize the positive impact of national service in our city to thank those who serve and to find ways to give back to their communities. So if you'd please come up after I call your name and receive your uh, certificate and then stand off to the side, then I'm sure Tyler would love a picture when we're done. Mary Blake, not here. John Blom. Rita Britz Tennis, Helen Funk, Edna Gallis, Sister Bernita Lindstrom. Sister Carol Meckle. Judy Plasic, Annie Sharon, did I miss anybody? I think that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you all for all your hard work. Consent agenda, Morrison County Attorney's Prosecution Report, January and February 2017 received. 
on sale brewer's tap room and Sunday license and brewer off sale intoxication liquor license. Kyle Kiefer and Thomas Goble Jr., Starry Eye Brewery Company, LLC, approve. Police Department report, February 2017, receive. Returning seasonal golf employees, authorize, approve. Temporary on-sale liquor license, Friends of Linden Hill, black and white event, June 22nd, 2017, approve. What's the wish of the council on the consent? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Got a motion by Council Member Gushek, second by Council Member Lilgeren. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries public hearings and lettings. Public hearing, facility plan, wastewater treatment facility, resolution 2017-23, adopt mm -hmm. and consider. Colin with SEH. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm Colin Marcus and I'm with SEH. Uh, so the city of Little Falls authorized SCH to complete a facility plan for their wastewater treatment facility um, about a year ago. Um, so myself and several other people uh, at SCH have been working on that and we submitted it um, in early March. Um, so you might be asking yourself what a facility plan actually is. Um, and I've got a lot of information to go through here, so I'll try to be quick uh, about it. But um, if you have questions about something, just stop me um, at any time. So in layman's terms, a facility plan is a document that you put together to evaluate your facility for um, shortcomings, I guess, as far as um, condition or capacity. So we'll, we evaluated the uh, existing facility for condition and capacity. Um, the, the planning period is over a 20-year period that's set by PFA, funding agencies, and things like that. Um, evaluates alternatives for improvements, uh, provides costs for those alternatives, um, includes, of course, environmental, uh, historical, archaeological reviews, and the alternative analysis. Um, and a facility plan or some variation thereof is required uh, by funding agencies uh, if you want your project to be able to get any, any kind of grant or state, state or federal grant um, or uh, loan funds. Um, they sometimes are called by other names, PERs or preliminary engineering reports or uh, CARs. So we did a little bit different um, setup with this facility plan than we've done with others. I think it worked out well, but we split the facility plan into five different tech memos that we then could review with the city as they became complete. Um, so Greg and the wastewater staff are probably getting tired of meeting with me, but um, I think it worked out well. So the first one was um, a review of lift stations one and two. Uh, tech memo two is um, future conditions for the wastewater facility. Tech memo three was liquid treatment alternatives. Four was solids treatment alternatives. And then five uh, is the wastewater use impact, uh, rate impact, I should say. So at the wastewater plant, uh, and this is a, a photo of the um, existing electrical building. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been there, but uh, these are. this was the original plant. So this was constructed in 1958. So as you can tell, there's some age issues. Um, the other thing that's driving the facility plan is regulatory compliance. So we talk about aging facility. Um, the, as I said, this is the original plant built in 1958. Um, intermediate clarifiers here, electrical building. Um, these were digesters when they were originally constructed. Uh, this has been con converted to a biofilter, but it was originally a trickling filter. And this was a gravity sludge thickener. Um, all of that is old. So we usually say uh, mechanical equipment has a life of about 20 years, whereas tanks have a life of 40 to 50 years, sometimes more, uh, if they're taken care of well. Um, unfortunately, uh, that all of those tanks and the equipment have just overlived their, their useful life. This stuff in yellow, on the other hand, uh, is actually in pretty good condition. So. Um, the mechanical equipment, uh, some of it needs replacement, but the tanks are in really good condition and most of it can continue to be used. The green was 2002 construction and that's in very good shape uh, and we plan to continue to use that. 
Um, so when we talk regulatory, com regulatory compliance, the city received a new wastewater discharge permit, uh, also called an NPDES permit, for their um, wastewater facility in 2016. Um, the uh, permit out laid out a compliance schedule, which says that you have to meet a phosphorus mass limit of 2,653 kilograms per year by August of 2023. Construction for a project that helps you meet that has to start by 2020. So those are the big drivers. So when we talk about um, how, how we're going to meet those limits and how we're going to replace aging infrastructure, we look at an alternative analysis. So we look at hydraulic and loading capacity, and we are bound by um, standards, you know, design standards, both uh, MPCA guidelines and 10 state standards, it's called. Um, we look at aging condition, we look at proximity of 100 year floodplains, um, wetlands, and public nuisance uh, for things such as odors, uh, which we'll talk about, and um, noise, uh, things like that, noisy equipment or, or, or such. Uh, construction sequencing, the existing plant obviously has to stay um, running uh, and meet limits while we construct the new one, so that can be a challenge at times. Um, and then future considerations as far as permit limits. So we talked about the phosphorus limit already, but uh, there are considerations for future nitrogen limits or uh, salty discharge limit, um, things like that, that we also took into consideration. Uh, so Tech Memo 1 we talked about is about uh, lift stations one and two. This is the plant right here. Lift station one is here. Lift station two is here. They are the main source of wastewater for um, all the flow into the wastewater plant. So we took a look at them based on capacity and um, age or um, health, I guess, <laughs> of the of the lift station. Um, essentially, we are recommending the same improvements on both lift stations. So the pumps are 31 years old, they need replacement. Um, but the capacity of the pumps is okay. So we're sticking with the same capacity of pumps. There's both wet weather pumps, two wet weather pumps, and two dry weather pumps, uh, and separate force mains for wet weather or dry weather. Little Falls is a town that has a lot of infiltration and inflow. Um, so there was plans made for that, obviously, in construction of these uh, lift stations uh, that allow them to kick in some bigger pumps when those um, infiltration and inf inflow flows uh, come into the station. Because of the gains in efficiency over the years um, in motors, um, we're able to drop horsepower on both lift stations, um, uh, both pumps on both lifts, both sets of pumps on both lift stations. Um, force main size and condition we found to be okay, so we're not recommending any replacement of that. Um, Small things, I guess, like replacing the rails, change, chains, valves, piping, electrical, and controls. Um, we're recommending a new portable backup generator at each station, which is a requirement by standards. Um, and then we'd link the controls to the SCADA system um, at the wastewater treatment facility. The cost for lift station one is about 424000 Lift station two, 515000 ish Total 939,500 bucks for um, improvements to lift stations one and two. Tech Memo 2 um, looks at future conditions. So what we do is uh, review the existing flows and loads to the wastewater treatment facility and then try to um, predict what the flows and loads will be in 20 years. So this column is the current flows and loads. This one is the 2038. Um, and actually what we found is that um, the existing permitted flow, which a wastewater treatment facility is permitted by its average wet weather flow, 2.4 is the current permitted average wet weather flow. So what we found is that the current permitted uh, flows and loads um, are actually in line with what we predict they'll be in 20 years as well, just because there's not really that much growth, not that much annexation coming in. Um, we can fit it within permitted flows and loads, which is good because if you go above and try to add capacity, then you have to do what's called an anti-degradation study, and that can be uh, expensive um, to the tune of over $100,000 in some cases. 
So these are the projected loads. Again, the facility was built uh, with this number in mind, 177 milligrams per liter BOD uh, at the um, average wet weather flow. Uh, Tech Memo 3 uh, is where we start to look at liquid treatment alternatives. Um, so the first thing you have to do when you um, look at liquid treatment alternatives is send a letter to the MPCA that says what are our limits going to be or what can we expect our limits to be and those are called preliminary effluent limits it's a requirement to the facility plan so they sent us back a letter that said um, while well, we requested for both a mechanical plant and a stabilization pond system um, they sent us back a letter that says here are your limits these limits are the exact same um, numbers as what are in your current permit. So that's good news. We're not expecting, you know, in five years that we're going to do an improvement and then get a different set of permit limits. Um, that's not a guarantee, but <laughs> from what MPCA is telling us now, th those numbers are going to stay the same. Um, so liquid treatment alternatives considered um, include reusing the existing system but making improvements to add capacity um, or replace aging, aging infrastructure, uh, a new oxidation ditch facility, a new sequencing batch reactor, a new IFAS system. These three are variations of the same type of process, just kind of different tankage. They're all activated sludge processes, which is pretty common, um, not only in Minnesota but countrywide. Um, and then we looked at a stabilization pond system and a new decentralized system, which is uh, mounds, essentially small septic systems placed around the city. That's a requirement, obviously, to uh, look at that. We didn't think that would be the best idea, but uh, we are required to review that. Um, so the non-mechanical plant options we're going to start with first. So we talked about uh, stabilization pond system. The requirements in Minnesota are 210 days of storage uh, at the average wet weather flow. Um, three pond system is part of the design standards for ponds as well. Um, at that storage and um, flow, we're talking at we're talking 5.6 million square feet of surface area that would be required, or like 400 acres. Um, just to do that excavation, uh, that doesn't include land costs, uh, doesn't include um, treatment after the ponds, anything like that. We're talking 56 million dollars. Now. A pond system obviously is going to have a lot less operation and maintenance costs than a mechanical facility. Um, but we went, um, Greg and I chatted about this uh, at several points, but um, we even looked at an 80 year life cycle cost compared to a mechanical facility, and the mechanical facility was still cheaper. Um, as I said, we were, we were uh, required to look at a decentralized system. Um, so Short, uh, long story short, sanitary sewer costs are just too high um, to make that affordable. Uh, now we get into the mechanical plant options, and I'm going to go through this on a kind of the way the flow goes through the plant. So um, the flow comes into the plant from the two lift stations into the equalization basin, which is right here. Um, each one of these slides has a, a spot that's highlighted in red, so you can tell where we're talking about. But um, we would propose putting in a new flow and splitter structure. Um, so equalization basins are very nice for a mechanical facility. They keep the, the flow rate and the loading fairly consistent into the plant, um, which can be really nice as far as operation goes. Um, the only problem with this is that the, um, the aeration system that's used for mixing and the blowers uh, are 20 years old and they need to be replaced. So we're proposing putting in um, submersible mixers, which are more efficient. Uh, flow goes from the equalization basin through metering uh, and into the existing preliminary treatment building. Uh, and then preliminary treatment building, there is screening uh, here and grit removal, actually in this basin, and then it's um, dewatered and washed in here. Um, this preliminary treatment building is actually in good shape, but um, unfortunately these units are sized too small for the actual um, peak flows, which is what this equipment has to be based on. 
So we're proposing to essentially take this equipment out, fill in the channels, and use this building for storage uh, or something else. Doesn't need to be demolished um, since it's still in good shape. But um, we'd be proposing building a new preliminary treatment building, new screening, new grit removal. Um, the other problem with this building is its elevation. Um, so that kind of goes in conjunction with the primary clarifiers, uh, which are here. The preliminary treatment building and the primary clarifiers were built low, um, so low that between the clarifiers and the next process, we have to pump the wastewater again, which isn't typical and highly inefficient. So we're pumping the wastewater into the plant and then we gotta pump all the wastewater again to the next process. We want everything to flow by gravity all the way through the plant once we get it to the plant. It's just way more efficient that way and we don't use nearly as much electricity. So the primary clarifiers are in good condition. The inside mechanisms need to be replaced. Um, we talked about the elevation. Um, they are needed for some processes. If you're gonna do anaerobic digestion, they're needed. If you're gonna do the IFAS system that we talked about, they're needed. So that had to be taken in, into consideration when we looked at those. Secondary treatment is the big hiccup in this um, whole treatment system. Um, this is the FGC tower, it's right here. It's essentially a tall trickling filter. Um, it's re reached its useful life, um, let's just say that, um, in pretty poor condition. The aeration basin is okay to use. They're used in parallel with each other, by the way, um, which also isn't typical at plants. Usually you've got one system that's doing the whole work. Um, the aeration basin tank is okay. The uh, diffusers and the blowers, which are in the building here, you can see it here, um, are old and need to be replaced. Um, so we're, we looked at options for replacing the secondary treatment. First option we looked at is an oxidation ditch. So as you can see, the FGC tower is gone. The old electrical building is gone. Um, this is a new electrical building, new preliminary treatment, preliminary treatment building, um, and then the oxidation ditches would sit here. The existing aeration basin would be kept in place to be used as um, what's called a selector tank for biological phosphorus removal. So that's what would be helping you to remove your phosphorus and meet, meet that limit. Um, the second option we looked at for <clears throat> excuse me, secondary treatment is an SBR basin, sequencing batch, batch reactor. Um, as you can see, the tankage size is a lot bigger with these. Um, oxidation ditches, although there's a lot of tankage, there's low O&M costs. It doesn't take a lot to, to run those. Basically, you just have to make the water go in a circle. Um, an SBR, you're filling one side while the other one drains. And that's why they call it a batch reactor, because you fill it up, you treat it, you drain it out. Um, but because everything happens in one tank, it's got to be a big tank. So a lot of concrete cost in here, a lot of equipment cost. Uh, unfortunately, that's um, you know too, too expensive as compared to an oxidation ditch. The other system we looked at, because it has smaller footprint, is an IFAS system, integrated fixed film, um, which is basically like your existing aeration basin but they take uh, fixed media and they put it in there, which gives the bugs more room to grow, more surface area to grow on. And they do, uh, when there's more bugs, you can get more treatment out of them. Um, so the, the tank size is a lot smaller, but it takes a lot more equipment to run these, unfortunately. A lot more, um, a lot more blowers, a lot bigger blowers. Um, you need filters, the media itself. Um, that came out as being too expensive as well. The, actu the, the recommended alternative for liquid treatment is actually, actually the oxidation ditch. Um, from secondary treatment, we go to the final clarifiers. The final clarifiers are in good shape. Um, the tanks themselves and the covers are in good shape. Um, the only thing that we'd recommend replacing is the drive, uh, yeah, the drive and the mechanism on the inside, the arm that goes around and, con and collects the uh, sludge from the bottom. From there, we go to the final liquid treatment stage, which is disinfection. That's done here in a um, chlorine contact tank. So right now, the city's uh, plant 
does a chlorination and dechlorination system. It's all chemical, so they're adding chlorine and they're uh, taking the chlorine out before it goes to the river with sulfur dioxide. Um, it's an expensive process. It's a process that's not very safe for the workers. Um, so we did a life cycle cost analysis um, with that system versus a UV light disinfection system that could be retrofitted into this tank. Um, life cycle cost, the UV is less expensive. So that's what we're um, recommending. That can be retrofitted into this existing tank on the wet, um, wet flow side. So this is uh, the site plan for liquid only. We're not talking about any of the solids yet. I'll get to that. I'm sorry I'm going long. <laughs> um, oxidation ditch with biological phosphorus removal. Um, you actually have to have chemical phosphorus uh, removal equipment as well, just in case the process gets upset or something like that. But this tank makes a lot of sense to keep for meeting future nitrogen limits should you get one. Um, that might be 10 years down the line, but at least you have the tankage there if you need to use it. Um, I won't go through each uh, individual recommended improvement, but as you can see, we're getting rid of this electrical building. We're getting rid of the FGC tower. These primary clarifiers are shown here, but they're not being used. Um, later on, you'll see that we're actually recommending removing these. Um, the cake sludge storage and all that, all that is still shown here, but we'll talk about that in, in just a few minutes. Total improvement, uh, recommended improvement costs for the liquid side is 11.5 million and change. As I said, there's some demo um, to consider. So this is the existing electrical building. These are the clarifiers, um, intermediate clarifiers that would need to be removed. Some roofing improvements uh, to the admin building and the um, blower building. Uh, Tech Memo 4 then takes us to the solids alternatives. Um, so biosolids have to be removed from the liquid process, uh, treated, and then disposed of. Typically in this state, we talk about disposed of as being land application, used as fertilizer for farmers' fields. Um, we want to reduce the volume as much as possible so that you can save on trucking costs. Um, these, um, we talked about these tanks and this build building being uh, original to the plant construction in 1958. They've all reached their useful, the end of their useful life and need to be torn down. Um, honestly, I believe that some of these are, are a safety hazard. Um, this process is inside your existing solids handling building. Um, the facility used to um, do a lime and heat um, stabilization system. It's called pasteurization uh, of the sludge. Uh, it's very expensive, very dangerous because you're handling um, powder lime uh, all day long. Um, so um, let's go through some demo related to the biosolids alternatives. This is the odor control system. This was mainly put in for the lime and heat stabilization system. That's taking, it's drawing air off of that system and sending it through this biofilter. Um, the processes that we are proposing to put in are all aerobic processes. Um, we won't have any of the lime or ammonia smell anymore. We won't have any smell coming off of new digesters or tanks. Um, there's really no reason to keep this odor control system anymore. It's not typical at a plant like this um, of this size. Um, this is a gravity thickener. It's not really doing anything anymore. Uh, again, reached its useful life and needs to be torn out. Again, this is the lime and heat stabilization system. It needs to be torn out. Um, and this is a existing sludge storage tank. So the solids treatment alternatives, when we consider those, we have to look at thickening, which we um, proposed a dissolved air flotation thickening um, system. It's got a small footprint and does a good job. Um, when we talk sludge treatment and stabilization, we're either talking aerobic um, digestion or anaerobic. Aerobic uses larger tank sizes, um, but more energy. Uh, they work better with extended aeration sludge, which is what we proposed on the liquid side. 
Anaerobic digestion, smaller tank sizes, but you need to have a lot more equipment. Uh, anaerobic digestion, unless you can get the gas to burn well and you make electricity out of it or use it for heat recovery or something like that, um, anaerobic digestion is very expensive to build and operate. Uh, sludge storage, you can do it as a liquid, you can do it as a cake like you're doing now, which is basically like a moist topsoil. Um, or you can do reed beds. So here's the alternatives for solids treatment um, and disposal. The first is aerobic digestion with cake storage. So all of those old tanks and the building are gone. We propose to put in two new aerobic digesters. They have to be, uh, you have to have a backup for one, so you have to have two tanks. Uh, and then we'd propose using your existing solids handling building with a centrifuge or two to um, dewater the sludge and store it in this existing cake storage building. There's enough room in there for storage uh, for up to a year. Aerobic digestion with liquid storage. So same thing, we'd go into these digesters, but then instead of dewatering, we'd pump over to the sludge storage tank that would be put in place of the primary clarifiers. As you can see, that's a pretty large tank. Uh, aerobic digestion with reed beds, same thing as liquid storage, except we are uh, pumping to the other side of the road um, south of the plant. Um, there's a parcel over there that we looked at putting uh, the reed beds on. Unfortunately, this, the reed beds had to be so large that they become non, non, not economical. Um, all of this has to be concrete with liners and, and those kinds of things, so it's a lot of capital cost. Anaerobic digestion with cake storage, so same as the aerobic digestion alternative, but this, the tanks are a little bit smaller. But we do have to have extra equipment here, um, gas safety equipment, um, membrane covers, things like that that get expensive. And anaerobic digestion with liquid storage. Because the tanks are smaller here, you see that this sludge storage tank got a lot bigger. We just have to have that much capacity uh, for the year to, to store the sludge. Um, so we did, like, like we always do, we do a 20-year present value or life cycle cost analysis. As you can see, it makes a lot of sense to reuse anything that we do cake sludge on. So your cake, existing cake sludge storage building or your dewatering facilities, things like that. So if you look at this number, this number, and this number, they're all pretty close in comparison with the rest. Um, and that's because they're using your existing facilities. Um, the lowest life cycle cost, and this isn't capital cost, this is the capital cost over here, lowest life cycle cost is 8.4, and um, that is the aerobic digestion with your existing dewatering um, system and existing cake sludge storage, and then land application. Primary clarifiers would be demolished in that case. Total capital cost for that option is 4.9 million. A little bit more than um, leaving the primary clarifiers in place, but operation of those primary clarifiers um, kind of tip the scale. Um, so then we get into uh, the wastewater user impacts. So how do all these recommendations uh, for um, improvements affect the user rate? So here's the new site as proposed. So flow would come into the EQ tank. Um, into the new primary treatment building, into the oxidation ditches, into the final clarifiers, uh, into disinfection, out to the Mississippi. Sludge from the final clarifiers would go to the aerobic digesters, dewatering would happen in the sol solids handling building, and then stored as cake sludge, and then trucked out once or twice a year. Um, as you can see, there's lots of demo work involved here. Uh, there's also a vector pad that um, we talked with the city. They'd like to add us, uh, have, have us add that too, so we did that. Total project cost summary is uh, a total of about $17.2 million in improvements, capital improvements at the plant. Um, the current wastewater user rates um, don't uh, have different rates for residential or commercial, they're the same. $15 a month um, access charge plus $5.83 per thousand gallons used. Um, we made some assumptions on how the project would be financed. So this assumes 100% loan for the project. Um, so here's that 17.2 million uh, total. 
uh, assuming a loan term of 20 years and probably a PFA loan of 1.5%, that's pretty typical. Um, Biannual payments, uh, the annual payment is around $999,000. Uh, the existing budgeted O&M cost is 844000 We are actually predicting that the O&M cost for the new facility will be lower than this existing O&M cost. Um, but to be conservative on our numbers, we kept that number uh, as is. Um, so if we add that to the, the annual financing payment, we get $1.8 million. Current annual revenue from fees is $1.7. Net increase of $105,000, uh, or 5.7%. So just as an example, a typical user who uses 6,000 gallons of water per month would pay approximately $52.83. Um, the thing I don't mention here is that the project is very likely to receive um, grant funds through the state. So this PSIG is um, short for Point Source Implementation Grant. Anytime you have to meet a phosphorus limit of less than one part per million, which yours is based on 0.8, um, they are very likely to give you a grant for that. Now, that depends on the Bonnie Bill being passed, of course, um, but um, that's very likely to happen. Um, the Green Project Reserve is the other one. If we can show savings of 20% in um, energy anywhere in the plant, uh, it can be bits and pieces. Um, there's up to, I believe, $4 million in grant uh, for that as well, which would be matching funds. So on a $8 million project, for instance, they could give you the total $4 million. Um, the city, as you can see, has done a very good job of planning for this kind of improvement. Um, most cities we go into, uh, this number is more like 50% increase. Um, they just haven't planned for it over the years. So um, nicely done on planning for the future. Um, anticipated project schedule. So we submitted the facility plan, like I said, in March. Um, we anticipate um, that we'd start design in uh, the fall um, or summer and then submit plans and specifications to MPCA, which is required uh, by the spring of 2018. Um, we'd then bid the project in the fall of 2018 or maybe spring of 2019, um, complete construction um, in the fall of 2020 or summer of 2021. That's all I have. I know I flew through that, so questions? Was our deadline date? of 2020 to start or to finish? 2020 is the start, initiation of construction. 2023 is when the limit has to be met. So we are a little bit ahead of schedule, which is great. Any other questions for him? None? Anyone from the public? Any public comment? Third and final call for public comment. I take it you have a way to keep everything running while you're tearing things apart and putting new things in? Yeah, so um, the, biggest, the biggest concern I had was that old uh, electrical building that's there right now is in the way of everything. <laughs> and in order to keep the plant running, you have to have an electrical building. So this new electrical building would have to be constructed prior to anything else. Before we demo any of that um, old electrical building, we'd have to build that electrical building first. If we do that, then we can start um, demoing that electrical building. We can start um, building this new preliminary treatment building while keeping the old preliminary treatment building in place. Um, the FGC tower, uh, we can actually tear that down and run flow through the existing uh, aerobic treatment basins if we backflow off enough during construction by um, trickling it through using this EQ basin. Um, otherwise, the rest of the process is, you know, we can do a final clarifier one at a time um, during off-peak flows, uh, things like that. Same, same with the sludge. Uh, we can do one tank at a time. 
So, yeah, a lot of uh, juggling, but it's a good challenge. Existing piping um, throughout the, the treatment facility is in decent conditions? You know, a lot of the existing piping, especially in this area, is pretty old. Mm -hmm. um, the stuff that, that was put in in 1985, I really don't have a lot of concerns about. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, your hydrogen sulfide levels have dropped significantly by the time you are inside the plant. Um, so I'm not concerned about that much. That being said, we're gonna need a lot of new piping just to redirect things to the new tanks. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the piping is gonna be new anyway. Okay. Any other questions? The 17 included the lift stations too, correct? Correct. correct. Yep, that's total project cost. I wasn't too clear why we needed a new backup generator on the west side of the river. East side. Uh, it's for the we east bought side. one not too long ago. Yeah, the west side has a new generator over there. This will be for the east side. Currently the east side is served off a generator in that old electrical building. Because we're tearing it down, we're going to have to have a temporary one for the east side uh, to, for backup power. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. What's the wish of the council on resolution 2017-23? I'll make a motion to adopt. Second. Got a motion by Alderman Hercock. Second by Councilmember <coughs> Lundberg to approve resolution 2017-23. Any discussion? Well, this is something we've known about for a while. We had to do especially to phosphorus. Uh, it's even looking less expensive than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so that's that's a good thing. And And then to find out We've prepared well, makes me feel good too because it's been a concern. So yep. I, I'm very happy with uh, <laughs> the way you've prepared. Uh, like I say, yeah, that number is usually a lot higher. So well done. Thing is, this is a couple years down the road yet. Things can change. Change orders come in. It, well, uh, I would. My bigger concern would be MPCA rulings and those limits, uh, as Colin indicated. The they. They can tell you what the preliminary results are going to be. They're off, not often, but the, there's been other cities or other p entities that have seen those change right. uh, from the times where they've been told the preliminary limits and then um, but when you get the final one for your MPDS permits, then they, they do change. So Just that, that would be something we need to stay on top of yeah. um, very closely as that process goes through. Just to comment on that quickly, the nice thing is that the MPCA's um, review of what they call the river eutrophication standards, which <coughs> fancy way of saying we're going to set the phosphorus limits for every plant that discharges to the Mississippi River. Uh, they just finished those um, studies this last summer. Um, so that limit you have is based on that study. So how often do they do those studies? Not terribly often, honestly. So uh, I anticipate that the phosphorus limit really won't change much. The only thing it might do is instead of being a mass limit, it might go to a concentration limit, which at that point, really all you're doing is adding more chemical. It's, I, yeah, I would think the phosphorus limit's pretty, well, as manageable as it can be and, yeah. and as expected as it's going to be. I mean, we're, we're going to have a phosphorus limit, and we're, it's likely going to stay at those levels. It's going to be nitrogen, salty discharges, the other uh, biosolids that are in there that are not as easily treatable, that, that could change. That's an experience right. that I've had before and what we've, what we've been seeing with our other cohort cities, too. So Agreed. Yeah, the, the nitrogen is one that it's going to be an unknown uh, coming moving forward until the MPCA kind of decides what they're going to do with it. The salty discharge, we're fortunate because with our plant, our, our water plant, yeah, we, we don't we we lime soften our plants. We've got soft water that we distribute to our our our, our residents for water. 
which in turn means those residents don't have to have a water softener in their house which discharges salt. Um, so that salt doesn't come to us at our waste plant which then we have to treat for. So by doing what we're doing over here at the water plant it helps for our effluent limits at our waste plant. What comes in got to go out. So that's a, that's a plus definitely for us and I'm, I'm glad that we're still going that route with, uh, with our water plant. That's, that is absolutely something to consider as our water plant continues to Correct. go through its capital improvements too. Yep. That, that, that saves us on, on one end and it is a, it is a full system thing full what goes, what goes out, comes okay. back in and, yep. um, you know, we're, we're fortunate in that I, I have came from a previous com community that once it came out of the ground, it wasn't meeting the limits. So, I mean, that, that's just, there's no easy way of getting around at that, at that point. So. I think it's great too that instead of doing the chlorine, where we're adding chlorine and then taking it back out right. again, that whole step is eliminated. Right. I was I was very pleased to see UV disinfectant yeah. as a as a that's yeah, positive that's, alternative. It seems to be the new standard. Yeah. So it's just a lot less dangerous too. And no chlorine's no, nasty. No lime either. Right. Which Correct. Is great. And I know our our residents in that neighborhood will be um, pleased to to with the aerobic digestion and, and not having to worry about as much for the odor controls. Right. There's always right. going to be times where the wind's coming the right direction or wrong direction for those of you. But uh, living in that neighborhood, I can tell you that it's 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 nice to not have to do the what like we're doing smell. with the lime with the yep, lime right. smell. And yep. Any other discussion? Hearing none, resolution, call the roll. Hercock? Yes. Gushik? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Hanfler? Yes. Liljegren? Yes. Kanafla? Yes. Carries. Thanks, Colin. <coughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Lettings, leaf and brush collection award, Lori? Mm -hmm. Yes, we did um, receive one bid for the spring leaf and brush collection was from Bob Lemire Roloffs Refuse and Recycling. The bid was $2,990. Um, that compares with last spring. Um, Bob Lemire had the bid as well, and that was $2,890, so it's a $100 increase. The money comes out of our SCORE grant, and the um, collection will be on May 6th, rain or shine, and the hauler will be leaving the bags. <coughs> What's the wish of the council? Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion by Mayor Zilka, second by Councilman Canofla. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. same sign. Motion carries. Mill and overlay, pavement maintenance, Tri-City award. Greg? Every year we target about $300,000 in preventative maintenance projects. Uh, this year, and typically in years we've got the uh, fog seal and the slurry seal. Uh, we do have those two uh, projects as well this year. Those both came in uh, lower than what we anticipated, and so we're looking at do adding to the fog seal project, which you'll see coming up here, as well as doing some other improvements, which would be a mill and overlay uh, in this area. So we are looking at doing a mill and overlay on 7th Street Southwest between 3rd and 4th Avenue and on 3rd Avenue Southwest between 6th and 8th Street. Um, we are looking at the amount of $45,348 from Tri-City Paving uh, to be charged to the Street Improvement Fund. What's the wish of the Council? Make a motion to award. Second. Got a motion by Alderman Hercock, second by Council Member Lundberg. To award to bid to Tri-City Paving. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Plow North Central Truck Equipment, Wastewater Treatment Facility. Award, Greg. If you recall in our last meeting, we approved uh, purchasing a three-quarter ton uh, GMC Sierra pickup to replace the one that the waste plant currently has. The one that they have down there did have a plow on it, so we are now looking at outfitting that new truck with a plow in the amount of $4,597 from North Central Truck and Equipment. This is off of the state bid, and that will be charged to the Wastewater Improvement Fund. What's the wish of the council? We'll make a motion to approve. Second. Got a member by Council Member Gushek, second by Council Member Liljegren for approval. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Replace carpet and workstations at the police department. Chief? 
Uh, Mr. President, members of the council, I'm requesting authorization to replace some carpet uh, at the police department. Uh, the carpet is original uh, to the remodel when we first moved in. Uh, some of those, some of the areas in the uh, back hallway have been replaced due to some water damage, and uh, I would ask that we could replace some of those other hallway areas and more of those highly traveled areas uh, in the building. Uh, this would exclude the the individual offices like my office or the captain's office, They're, the carpet there is still fine. But uh, in some places, it's starting to separate from the floor. And then as part of that as well, I'm running out of some uh, out of uh, work uh, space for uh, the officers uh, that we currently have. I met with John and we discussed uh, uh, workstation configuration that would add three more workstations to the, the main office area. So I'm requesting authorization also to replace the two workstations that are existing uh, with a new configuration that would allow for three more workstations. Uh, the uh, funds, uh, the carpet uh, estimate was $5,776.74 from uh, WeCheck. Uh, he's the one, uh, their uh, business installed the carpet uh, that was replaced due to the water damage a year or so ago or two years ago. And it would be the same uh, carpet uh, as they put in at that time. And then the uh, workstations are from Business Machines Plus at $16,630. Uh, and those funds were part of the capital improvement budget. What's the wish of the council? I make motion to approve. I'll second it. Got a motion by Mayor Zoka, second by Council Member Gushik for approval. Any discussion? Not long ago, we bought a desk. We got a different price on through NJPA. Those workstations, anything like that to get it? With, um, with the workstations, it's they're probably very comparable to what we could have had. The the vendor that we utilized was for higher end equipment. So like this is these are more cubicle like manners. They're okay. it's it's going to be you know a desk with a cubicle wall um, arrangement. So I'm confident with the prices that we got from these. We did do some comparison with them, um, and I I think it's a vendor that we've worked with a lot before, and and I think they're. I'm comfortable with that arrangement. Plus, there's going to be a lot of wiring with getting the, the computers and all of those things al arranged and installed to that, too. So that'll be um, kind of going alongside of it as well. So, And that's our, our contracted IT person. So some of that work is, is covered under our service contract with that individual. Okay. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Retaining wall, Amcom Block, First Street Southeast. Greg. In our 2017 capital improvement plan, we're looking at replacing the uh, the fence along First Street Southeast over by the Rosenmeyer Pond, uh, over by Maple Island Park there. Uh, in order to do so, we want to widen that a little bit because when we do maintenance activities, snow plowing and such, it's very tight in between there to get uh, any sort of equipment in through there. So we're looking at widening that about four feet and then putting a, a fence and a railing um, in, in that area. To do so, we'd be looking at installing a retaining wall uh, on that that uh, that slope and then we build the, the fence up above that uh, we did get a price from Amcon block for retaining wall block in the amount of seven thousand seventy six dollars uh, for the block city staff would uh, would install that uh, but tonight we are looking for council approval to award the quote to Amcon block for seven thousand seventy six dollars uh, and that would be charged to the park improvement fund what's the wish of the council make a motion to approve second Got a motion by Alderman Hercock, second by Councilmember Canoffla for approval. Any discussion? Is the railing included? No, the railing would be something separate. We've got to talk to the park board on what type of railing they would like in there. Uh, this is just for the block, but regardless of which railing, we'd still need to get that block in. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Rental fleet, golf carts, award, John. Um, and in your packet, the memo, uh, I do will do have an update to that. Be our trade total did decrease because we did uh, give the zoo two of our golf carts. That comes down by a total of two thousand nine hundred dollars. Uh, so the total overall net net total is going to be one hundred thirteen thousand eight hundred dollars. Uh, this would be to award um, purchasing thirty two thousand seventeen EasyGo TXT gas carts. 
front through Versatile and through our national IPA uh, joint powers or cooperative purchasing contract. Uh, as we've discussed in the past and presented that our our electric fleet and the age of our electric fleet is is not the most efficient operating that we could have for the carts. We're undersized in total of carts that we have and need, and especially in times of tournaments. Um, regular daily play, weekend play, it's our fleet is adequate, but we do at least eight tournaments a year where we're renting additional carts, and we're usually renting them through Versal, so um, I don't think they'll be disappointed that we're buying additional carts from them and not, not having to rent as much but every one of those rentals uh, costs a lot of money so with that and the battery sa savings on the battery replacement the savings and just the general operating cost between the carts we figured w there was about over twelve thousand dollars worth of um, total savings it was actually closer to 15 um, and when you compared it to what the the gar gas carts and adding to the fleet would would be we were generating over two thousand dollars of annual savings when you spent um, took 10 years of of the 10 year operating costs for those carts um, applied that against what we we're currently spending on carts we we're saving about two thousand dollars so we're going to be saving in in that terms of, in in that same range so this is a great um, step in our operating costs uh, it was something that we were looking at and budgeting for for this year so uh, we're recommending that we purchase the 30 carts through versatile and our cooperative purchasing contract and trade in the remaining uh, electric um, carts that we were that they had previously identified. What's the wish of the council? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Got a motion by Council Member Gushek, second by Council Member Lundberg for approval. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Old business, change order number one, Tri-City Paving, maintenance, fog seal, approved. Yep, as I mentioned earlier, we'd like to hit to budget or to target around $300,000 in maintenance work. Um, we are looking at adding work to uh, the fog seal uh, project. We're looking at about $55,670.60 to add to that, pro to that project. We're looking at areas in the Riverwood area and the Chief Hole in the Day Business Park area that have utilities underneath the pavement. You'll recall that there's a number of areas, specifically in the Riverwood uh, addition, that do not have um, utilities underneath the pavement. We will not be doing uh, preventative maintenance in that area because once we're gonna have, once we put utilities, we're gonna have to dig up the the blacktop. So it's no use spending money on the blacktop if it's going to be uh, pulled up. So we are looking at, and there's a number of uh, roadways that you have in your packet here, uh, Park Avenue, Pine Avenue, Lowry Drive, Oak Lane, Elm Street, Mississippi Boulevard, Grove Street, Circle Drive, Oak Street, uh, Ryan Street, 11th Street uh, Northeast, and then 22nd Avenue Northeast. We would propose to add that as change order number one to the project in the amount of $55,670.60 to be charged to the street improvement fund. <coughs> What's the wish of the council? I move that we approve. Second. I got a motion by Council Member Lundberg, second by Council Member Kanofla for approval of change order number one. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. New business petition, traffic control, Broadway Avenue East. We received a petition uh, to increase the traffic control along Broadway Avenue East. Tonight we are asking the council to receive it, uh, and then we can look at uh, the petition and uh, see what options are available uh, for the council. <coughs> have a motion to receive? I'll make a yes. motion. I'll second it. Got a motion by Council Member Gushek, second by Council Member Kanafla to receive the petition. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Resolution 2017-24, order feasibility report, surface and or utility improvements, 3rd Street Southeast, public improvement 376. Greg? With bids coming in the way they did with our 376 project or 2017 projects here, uh, we are looking at um, still going to around that $1.1 million worth of work uh, annually. We are asking the council to order in the feasibility report on 3rd uh, Street Southeast between 1st Avenue and 3rd Avenue. Uh, this is one of the older parts of town and so we are looking at uh, doing the feasibility report on that that stretch to possibly be included with this year's project. What's the wish of the council? 
I'll make a motion to adopt. Second, anyone? I'll second it. Got a motion by Alderman Hercock, second by Councilmember Gushik to approve resolution 2017-24. Any discussion? Hearing none, resolution, call a roll, please. Bushick? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Hanfler? Yes. Liljegren? Yes. Knopfler? Yes. Burkock? Yes. Carries. Resolution 2017-25, order feasibility report, repair and or replace sidewalks, public improvement PIR. Craig? Every year we do our sidewalk improvements. Uh, this year we are looking at the downtown uh, area as well as other areas that we've been notified of uh, potential tripping hazards. And so tonight we are asking the council to order in the feasibility report uh, for the sidewalk improvements uh, as shown in Exhibit A. I do have one addition to Exhibit A. It's along 7th Street uh, between, a second here. First Avenue and Second Avenue Northeast, uh, we would be asking the council to order in that feasibility report. What's the wish of the council? I'll make a motion. Second. Got a motion by council member Lodrigan, second by Mayor Zilka, to approve resolution 2017-25. Any discussion? Hearing none, resolution, call a roll please. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Hanfler? Yes. Liljegren? Yes. Knopfler? Yes. Hercock? Yes. Gushik? Yes. Carries. Resolution 2017-26, accept feasibility report and call for public hearing sidewalks, public improvement PIR. Greg? This is the feasibility report for our sidewalk improvements. Um, we are asking the council to uh, accept, the or accept the feasibility report and call for the public hearings. That way we can have the public come in uh, and hear what the project is all about. Um, so I'm asking the council to approve resolution 2017-25 with the amended exhibit A, which includes the 7th Street uh, portion of the project. What's the wish of the council? So moved. Second. Got a motion by Mayor Zilka, second by Councilmember Member for approval of resolution 2017-26. Any discussion? I just had a question because there was the same as the one we just had before, but there was a big price difference between the two. In terms of the total. It should not be 30000 It should be 11258 is the dollar amount uh, with the city's share being 3196 Not the 30 and the Not the 30, seven. nope. Okay. Nope. That was my, that's my error. Any other discussion? Hearing none, resolution, call a roll, please. Silka? Yes. Hanfler? Yes. Liljegren? Yes. Knopfla? Yes. Hercock? Yes. Gushik? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Carries. Resolution 2017-27, adopt fee schedule, tap room, and off-sale brewer's license. John? Um, with the opening of Starry Eye Brewery uh, sometime this year, we don't have on our fee schedule the tap room or off-sale brewer's licenses that we, uh, as in terms of a fee established for those. Um, we compared it to other cities, and it's and it's something that isn't substantial. And since they're, they'll be the only one for some significant amount of time, and neighboring cities don't set that fee very high, we're we're keeping it pretty modest. Um, so. Really, it's it's just make sure that we have an amount that's in there. Uh, Two hundred dollars for the on sale and on sale Sunday Brewers Tap Room, and one hundred fifty dollars for the off sale Brewers Intoxicating. Um, it's since they don't do liquor, it's just just beer. I think those those fees are are very reasonable. Is that similar to what like the black and white pays, where they just have wine and beer for on sale? I think the on sale wine and beer is like three hundred. Three hundred, yeah. They they also do have other additional fees that they have um, just to get us established, and they do have the on sale permit. These are just for fees that we hadn't established um, relative to those to them being a tap room and a brewery. Uh, they don't. We didn't have those fees established. That was something that we start we initiated last year with our ordinance, and we didn't establish a fee to it at the time. But a restaurant that serves liquor is higher. Yep, and they yes, and they don't and they won't have food service on site. They would only have the um, opportunity yeah. to have people bringing in their own food or yeah. What's the wish of the council on resolution twenty seventeen twenty seven? 
make a motion to adopt. Second. Got a motion by Alderman Hercock, second by Mayor Zilka to approve resolution 2017-27. Any other discussion? Hearing none, resolution, call a roll, please. Anfler? Yes. Liljegren? Yes. Knopfla? Yes. Hercock? Yes. Gushik? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Carries. Anyone got any reports? Just want to mention to the council that our water plant project is coming along. We've got the two filters uh, replaced with the new media, and so I would say we're about 65% done or so, um, and they're working hard to, to meet their May deadline for the other, uh, the other two, two filter cells. Anyone else? I did want to note um, that Rich Fry in the golf course was recognized as the um, Hook a Kid on Golf Program's uh, new community of the year. So that was uh, something that he initiated last year, uh, getting some, some youth out to the course for a couple weeks to do, introduce them to the, to the game of golf. So um, it was a really successful program, and he's going to continue it, and it's nice to see that he was, they've been recognized. So. Any announcements? Hearing none, 843, we will adjourn. Over there.